Guys, I'm realizing we fucked up. We shouldn't have put an Andalite on our logo. People are going to know that we're the Andalite bandits and they're going to come straight for um, us. Like, we just blew our cover. Okay. The hawk was such good cover. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That hawk was on Visser 3's uh, top 10 most wanted list. So. <laughs> In 1996, Scholastic began publishing Animorphs. Over the next six years, Catherine Applegate and her husband, Michael Grant, under the pseudonym K.A. Applegate, produced 54 main series books, several spinoffs, and inspired a TV series, graphic novels, and a cult following. We can't tell you where we live. We can't even tell you our last names. But we can tell you our thoughts and feelings on this series, book by book. I'm Miranda. I'm Eddie. <laughs> and I'm Chris. And we are... The, the Anadorks! <laughs> <laughs> These may be kids' books, but we discuss dark themes and mature content. There may also be some explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. We, like, left at a really high, high, like, tension yeah, moment. Yeah, we did. And despite talking about it, I don't think we really addressed how wild it is that not only does Rachel have... The most magnificent case of amnesia here. Amnesia, yeah. She's been kidnapped and is in a burning... She's not just kidnapped. She's also in the basement of a burning building, Great. She just takes to things so well. Like, I... (laughs) I think that's, that's what I was setting up there. Yeah, she's just so yeah. adaptable. <laughs> you just keep that up great. Adaptable, yeah. Yeah, not only to, to, it escalates even further, Rachel is in a building that's burning and also about to be torn apart by a knife monster. Yeah, it's like the Azathoth cloud being. It's like yeah, it yeah, just yeah. opens up into a bunch of like blade garbage disposal mouths yeah. and like descends down. And so axes yeah. run up on her as this is happening. And then. For the first time in the history of Animorphs, we get Axe as a narrator. Whoa. Yeah. I know. Big drop. New new narrator just dropped. Yeah. He introduces himself, says his last name, unlike the rest of our narrators. He does a great job of catching, like, he knows he didn't have a book yet. And yeah. he's like, here's the thing. <laughs> you got everyone else's perspective and with every perspective you got a why i fight moment so i'm gonna get that out of the way right away and tell you that viscer three killed my brother someday i must avenge that death i must kill viscer three or be dishonored we know why he fights theme of like i don't know the dishonored thing this theme of like american imperialism and the andalites yeah yeah yeah. it also it feels very klingon-y he also Goes on to double down on what we heard earlier in the book, which is that Axe is not an animorph. Yeah. Uh, I beg to uh differ, sir. Do not believe the lies they tell you. You are an animorph. (laughs) But do you think maybe they really want him to be an animorph and maybe even be a mascot for the animorphs? But it's actually Axe setting that boundary. And he's, he's like, like, not no, an animal. I think it was. It doesn't make so, me special that I morph. I'm an Andalite. I morph so, normally. You guys are the right. weird ones. I'm normal. <laughs> Maybe it, it's that he takes issue not with he's not an animal morpher. It's that he doesn't identify as person who morphs into animal. Axe reminds us of his little that he participated in the heist at Darlene's. The foolish venture is how Alex acts. The foolish uh-huh. venture. And then he gets. One of my favorite lines in possibly the whole book, which is Marco is highly intelligent, but he is also very afflicted by a condition the humans call sense of humor. I have noticed that Marco's sense of humor sometimes makes him do strange things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both, Ax. I also, I have to touch upon, um, after saying he's not one of the Animorphs, he cuts in, but I fight alongside them against our common enemy, the Yurks. And while I am on Earth, I have taken Jake for my prince. 
What wink, does that wink, mean? Wink. I don't know. What, is, what, is that mean? Mean? what does that mean? What does he mean? Is he in love with Do princes take or get love? taken? What do we think? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he catches us up to the fact that he's just walked in on Rachel and Bear Morph. How scandalous. <laughs> he ran to the smoke. He decides to run toward the smoke when he sees it. Because where there's smoke, there's Rachel. She smokes like a chimney. <laughs> he thinks the beast might be following him. So he runs toward the fire, but we know from the outside perspective that actually it seems like the beast was heading toward the fire as well. We know and anyone mm-hmm. actually yeah. paying attention knows that, but uh, <laughs> Axe not well, paying attention. Well, he didn't see that part. He doesn't know That's what's true. at the other end yet, but there's a he races toward the smell of smoke, he says, and he says his tail was tucked down tight against his back for speed. And I want to address this. Yes. Yeah, break it down. I think what this means is that he is laying his tail up over... Over his back. Over He's spooning his back. himself. He's spooning himself. Had, does any animal do this? I don't think no. that's actually what's happening. But my theory was, because I made a note about this too, I think that he actually just doesn't want to say butt, and it's actually down. Oh, like, but wouldn't it be between his legs then? Maybe. I guess it's a pretty long Because it's too tail. long to just point straight at the ground, yeah. right? And they say butt. Hold on. I'm pulling. I want to see it. My tail was tucked down tight against my butt for <laughs> Between my cheeks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> between my cheeks. Yeah. You're right. I didn't Where read it closely. No it does actually answer yes. right there. <laughs> <laughs> my main complaint is that animals don't really. Like, I feel like when you watch a cheetah run, they stick it's it like out using straight its cheeks. And slightly yeah, down. Yeah. Like, they use it to, like, counter thing and yeah. like they waggle it That's around That's not a how lot. animals on earth typically use their tails. Yeah. I think he is self-spooning. It's for speed, I think that's what's right? Happening. For speed. So, f- yeah, and my assumption would be to be aerodynamic. That, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, regardless of whether the tail is up over the back or down between the legs, we can all agree he's Naruto running. Yeah. Right. Oh my God! He absolutely <laughs> yeah. is not arms running. just dangling. Arms just straight <laughs> yeah. yeah. Axe comes upon Rachel and sees her. We have the little interaction we saw at the end of Rachel's narration, and then Rachel's just like Bleeding. not with it. Yeah, she has pretty much the exact wrong reaction here. Axe tries to tell her not to fight the thing, to like run away, like don't think you can beat this thing. And then we get the line that is like just just the beginning of all the horror that really is about to come. The beast of a hundred gnashing mouths descended on the bear. (laughs) The bear swung a massive paw. It was a blow that would have knocked my head from my shoulders, a blow that would have punched through steel. The claws raked the dust beast's closest mouth. Rawr, the bear cried in sudden pain. Its paw was gone, (laughs) simply gone. In its place was a shattered, bloody stump. (laughs) My God, like zero to 60, like just nothing. In the bear's mindset of attack, still standing erect and defiant, to quote the book, she swings out again, and this time... Her entire front leg is removed. And at that point, Axe says, all right, two arms, that's too many. Two arms, too many. It's a famous Axe. You you take the hand on or off. You don't take hands on or off. Right. You get uh, me, one hand. I know the rules. You've broken the rules. Uh You've broken the Andalite code. So he searches his memory for a morph to fight the monster. But nothing comes to mind. Rachel's bear morph is the most powerful morph they have. So how... You know, are they going to fight this? I take issue with this moment because Axe is narrating right now. He's cycling through what morphs he has. It means he's probably also cycling through morphs from the Andalite planet. And this is... We don't know if he has any of those. He might have dumped his cash when he landed. I don't know. I just want to see them going by, though. Do I use this morph? No. Do I use this morph? No. I just... I feel like what we're going to find out is that he was not allowed to do anything on that ship. Yeah, he had just gotten his morphers permit. Yeah. Like, maybe he even snuck aboard or something. Like, he was a stowaway. And so, like, you know, while he was waiting to be rescued underwater, he went and found a morph cube and, like, rubbed it all over. Oh, you think he hadn't even touched the the morph cube? No, I think, and I don't even know, do Andalites have to touch a morph cube to morph? Yeah, I think so. It's a technology. Okay. Okay. I, I keep forgetting so. that, though. I keep thinking it's an innate I've power. I've decided. I like the morphing permit idea. 
I think that I'm choosing to go with that <laughs> until we get more information. Yes. And when you're 16, you have your Cinderella morphing, Morphers, morphing permit, license, which, in which at midnight you morph into a pumpkin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Axe is like, OK, I can't morph anything to fight this. I can't save Rachel. Uh-huh. And she dead. She bear. She yeah. dead. And he sees this thing like engulfing her. It doesn't eat her like he was thinking it's just like consuming her and so he uh-huh. decides to morph maybe uh-huh. a bird he's thought maybe a bird i can't save rachel but maybe i can follow the monster and see where it goes to try to figure out what's going on with it uh-huh. but as he starts to morph the beast lets go of rachel it just it just poof, uh-huh. lifts up uh-huh. from her and goes right at x yeah and yeah. then x yeah. The smartest boy in the book yes. finally puts together that the morphing is attracting the monster. Now, <laughs> not only because this is not the first time this will be learned, and I'm pretty sure this isn't even the last time Axe will learn this information. True. But yes, he says it was the morphing. That's what it was after. It was reacting to the morphing. It was the morphing energy itself that drew the beast. And Chris, I saw one yes. of your notes was morphing energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like a clue. Yeah. It feels like, um, if, and you know, like, I don't know, like in a, the first section of the book, I think Marco refers to it as some sort of biotechnology. biotechnology yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, we're getting little hints about how this thing might yeah. work, which is very exciting. Yeah. And then it says that the beast lifted from Rachel. I had a flash of her bare body wrapped in living <laughs> ropes the beast had not killed her. Just say tentacles. Just say tentacles. Yeah, Yeah, keep going. Um, It had it wrapped up as if wrapping a gift. Weirdest Christmas special (laughs) ever. Yeah. Yeah. The ropes dissolve back into particles Mm -hmm. to become a cloud again, and then they descend on X. Mm -hmm. I like this as like some sort of particle spider. You know, (laughs) like it's just tying up its prey. X decides to just revert to Andalite And he's like, there's nothing I can do. He could barely breathe. He can't move. And he feels it lifting him up. But Axe has figured out, he thinks, based on what he knows about it, tracking morphing energy. He thinks he knows who its master is. But he doesn't tell us. It must be. He doesn't tell us. I do want to say. Well, he doesn't want to be wrong. He learns that, but also he learns to fight was to be shredded. And I just thought that was a yes. funny line. Uh, Shredded. Uh, Raphael mm-hmm. from Three Houses. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> so then we move on to Jake. We're back to Jake. So Jake. My th- wolf knows. Is in a wolf morph with Marco. Uh-huh. They're on the search for Rachel. Yes. And they're where, they're where Axe got picked up from. Through the descriptions, we come to find out that they are standing near the burnt down shack. And it smells like there was Blood everywhere. Yeah. A bear. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. humans. Yeah. And an alien. Yeah. <laughs> Tobias swoops in. He's here too. They're waiting for it. They were expecting Axe to find them, but Axe is not there. They don't know what happened here. Yeah, they start doing like a Sherlock Holmesian observation thing where they're like counting footprints. Yeah, and they're for like, these barefoot and... footprints have to be Rachel. These hoof prints have to be Axe. <laughs> and then they notice that like the bear is missing some footprints. Well, the, the bear, no yeah, handed. the bear appears to be walking yeah. on hind legs for like yeah. a thousand yards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I feel, and this is what a lot of this, at least what we're going to talk about today is a lot of the group learning the same information but at different times different yeah parties have different amounts of information they start to conjecture about what would have gone and attacked a bear too yeah to which marco quickly replies a man with a gun <laughs> and i just it's like uh-huh very good yeah that's like, that could <laughs> beat a bear yeah. yeah yeah another grizzly or some animal that isn't from earth no earth animal can mess with a grizzly they bear. also wonder if Axe and Rachel might both be dead. There's like a period of time here where they think maybe it got both of them. And Tobias says, no, Andalites are tougher than they look. I'm with Axe a lot out here in the forest. Don't write him off. Who knows what Tobias has seen Axe doing that he feels so confident about this. Well, he did fight a puma. That's true. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. that's not nothing. Yeah. And then Tobias has the uh, Watson moment. So he gets here, sees Rachel and the beast going at it. 
Axe is a brave guy. He jumps into it. Rachel gets away. She's bloody, but she gets away. And Axe? Why isn't he still here? Or else, why don't we see a separate set of Andalite tracks leaving? Or at least see his body. Yeah, that or at least see his body line really hit me that I was like, wow, okay, no, they are fully confronting the fact that their friend might be dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and Axe just thought Rachel. He watched Rachel die for a moment, too. Well, that's what mm-hmm. he, yeah, that's what he thought. And so Marco and Jake decide, I mean, it's too late at night. Like, they have to go home. They're Uh already probably going to get in trouble at this point. Uh But there's not much light left. So Tobias is going to do what he can with it. He's going to do a flyby and they're they're going to go go home home. as to not arouse suspicion. And they kind of underline what questions they're left with. So if if these are the Yurks tracking them, like going after them while they're even just morphing, does that mean that the Yurks know who they are? Like even outside yeah, of Morph? that's right. And also, where is Rachel? Uh-huh. And how do they stay alive? How do they beat this monster? That's what they're left with. Yeah. It's true. It's funny. It's like, it really is, like you were saying earlier, the asymmetrical knowledge in this book is one of the cooler yeah. things about it. So then um, we cut to Chapter Cassie 17, Cassie. At the mall. She's been sent on a different mission. She's a little resentful about it. You know, the boys <laughs> went off to search the forest and maybe fight the monster. And they said, you should look at other places Rachel likes to go. Uh, like like the mall. Mm-hmm. Rachel's a goyle. A goyle. She loves, uh, a goyle. She loves shopping. You know, Rachel does be shopping. <laughs> the mall. Yuck. She says. Mm-hmm. Utter disdain. Um, and she's there on a Saturday evening. We know now the day of the week. <laughs> And she's there to look for Rachel. She got tasked with looking at places where she might have been. My thought was like, maybe Rachel, I for a second was like, maybe Rachel will like find her way to the limited. Um, but that. Limited two, please. Is that what it was? Limited two was the like juniors. Oh, uh, got you, got It's called you. Justice now. She just recognized that the one piece of fabric was from the limited. Yes, the that's, true. Hut that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Do we think that that woman returns? I know this is an aside. Do we ever get to Ooh. see her again? That woman that was in the shack with all the clothing? You don't think she went down I'd with sure the fire? Hope so. Or what if it's Eileen falling on hard oh. times and Rachel didn't recognize her because she had lost Does her she memory? remember friends, though? That's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's what would have given it away if she had started, like, talking about, like, even Monica's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Eileen? Like, Damn it, it's Eileen. Who's the most yerkable friend? Oh, man, it's Joey. <laughs> Phoebe's the only one that doesn't get yerked and then no one believes her. But yeah, everybody but thinks Phoebe's yerked yeah, the right, whole time. Right. They assume she's yeah. yerked because she's unfussed about what's yeah, going on. Yeah. So Cassie's at the mall. She's She thinks she sees Rachel for a moment. We learned that Rachel's favorite frozen yogurt flavor is key lime pie. It's a good choice. And so I highlighted that in green, bright green. Just um. <laughs> She's wondering why she got put on this mission, too. She's like, is it just because I'm a girl and I can't handle the tough stuff? Jake shouldn't do shit like that. And then like and then she has like a moment of self doubt where she's like, it's because it's because you told Jake about the stupid dream. I realized now he thinks you're losing it. Not a surprise, is it? Tell a guy you're having nightmares where you face evil and choose who it kills. He's going to think maybe you're losing it. And I just really like that because, like, now I think that should go on everybody's dating profile. <laughs> like, you should just lead with that. But this is a this is a theme for Cassie throughout this book, both the feeling like she's off the front lines and this uh, big decision that she feels like is weighing on her. Yeah, which is uh-huh. choosing between... Choosing who lives and who dies. She can't save everyone, right? Right. Right. She sees Chapman. Simply save them all. Yeah, she runs into Chapman at the mall, who's like just doing some shopping. Is that B. Dalton Bookstore? Like, don't know B. Dalton. B. Dalton Bookstore. Not Walden Books. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Not Walden, not Walden Books. Walden not Books. my jam. Yeah. Not my yeah. jam. And then she has a realization that like made me question if she was going to walk right up to Chapman and like confront him about the dust yeah. monster. <laughs> like she was like, Chapman, if this dust creature was linked to the Yurks, he would know. Chapman was our assistant principal at school. We could always trust Chapman. He's also <laughs> one of the highest ranking controllers. I should go ask 
asked Chapman about the dust monster. It really, for it's a like, second, I was like, did she... I, for a second, I was like, is she glitching like, out? Do like, they know? The is it like he's keeping their secret and they're keeping... I'm like, did I miss something? And she, she goes, like, like, to be clear, it Chapman, does not say... Just, what do yeah. you know? Chris, Chapman, good buddy, old it, chum. How's the old worm in the <laughs> ear? Uh, Cassie does not think consider walking up to Chapman. How is no. your dead-eyed daughter? <laughs> the landlord's dead-eyed daughter. Dead-eyed daughter. <laughs> I, I love this. She follows Chapman into B. Dalton Bookstore, and uh-huh. Chapman goes to the history section. And Cassie's, like, very yeah, suspicious. Yeah. What on earth did a controller want with history? <laughs> and it's, like, a really silly question, because, like, Fitting in and knowing <laughs> what's going on on planet Earth is a big deal to Yerks. It's a big part of the plan until they're on top. Yeah, so, and if I don't Chapman's know. not cooperating, he's going to be like, oh, I don't know what World War II yeah. is. Uh-huh. I uh-huh. can only see some memories of what he thinks. Of. It turns out, very poor education for Chapman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why he's yeah, only ever yeah. assistant principal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was a pity. It's just weirdly enough, doesn't require a degree. It's just clicks of saving private Ryan. (laughs) Cassie goes into the tiny employee's bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom for tiny employees. That's correct. At first, at first, it all seems. (laughs) At first, so it all seems really. Yeah. (laughs) For the nineties, tiny bookstore Um, for tiny people. (laughs) But yeah, and then so she decides that she's just gonna do a quick little morph, and she's gonna be a little be in his bonnet just yeah. a quick moment. if I could be a fly on the wall and she turns into Jeff Goldblum and starts uh, shadowing Chapman for she her turns into a house fly and follows Chapman yeah we get some I feel like this is a pretty good morph right yeah should we stop yeah. here we can stop <laughs> there's a phrase the here uh, my thumb blossomed open oh god two other oh, fingers and my a- thumb blossomed open splitting into thousands of tiny sticky hairs yeah don't yeah. love that yeah and that it, it's the kind of thing that used to scare me to death when we first started morphing let me tell you the worst horror movie you ever saw in your life is a joke compared to actually watching your own body turn into something else. And Eddie, you asked in our speedrun episode if uh, puberty allegory yeah, was a thing true. in this book. And it's uh, it's like, yeah, I think I think it's text right there. Great, like, great uh, sound effect of for two new legs exploding from her chest. Sploot. Sploot. Yeah. Oh. That usually describes when a corgi is laying on their belly with their back legs sitting back. <laughs> oh, I also like this. The legs shot out and be like huge black worms. They grew dagger like hairs and formed the joints and became as hard as plastic. My nose split open, forming two halves. Yeah, yeah. Then her eyes switched to compound eyes while she's seeing, still seeing through them. Yeah, I really feel like they upped their morph game, like, here in this book. Like, I feel like we were had fallen off for a while. It's good. And then the chapter ends with um, Cassie flying after Chapman, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and she's proud. She's proud of her morphing ability. She knows she's the best. She's even better than X. And it says, I know it's kind of a stupid thing to be proud of, but I am. And I'm happy for Cassie. Knowing that she also yeah. thinks Rachel would be proud of her for going out on a limb like this, yeah. But that's also something you would say whenever you do something stupid, yeah. Like Rachel, like Rachel would this. think this yeah. was cool, yeah, like. yeah exactly. Yeah. Chapter 18, this is a good one. X. The dust carried him up and up. We began to slow down, slower and slower. Stop. The dust beef hover. The dust beef. <laughs> the dust beef. <laughs> oh my God. The dust beast hover. That's what I'm going to call How dry aged beef from now on. I'm going to call yeah, it like, dust when you, beef. When you dry like beef rub, jerky. When you do a dry right. rub on your beef, yeah. that's right. dust beef. It's dust beef. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We should have a fucking recipe book of all dust our like beef. <laughs> dust beef. And then the a uh, gap. Opened in the howling wall of dust that enveloped me with gap employee controllers. Oh, I'm sorry, a uh, uh, gap, a uh, uh, gap, a uh, uh, gap. I was uh, going to uh, say gap. very different yeah. from a uh, the gap. We've got a yeah. uh, uh, gap or the a uh, 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 gap. gap. <laughs> yeah, the a uh, gap. <laughs> um, so we're following Axe as he's being kidnapped by the mm-hmm. dust beast. We really do need a name at this point because we've described this creature yeah. in so many smoke, smoke monster, monster smoke dust monster. trees. It turns out he's really high up in the sky. But he's not outside of orbit. He's still within right. the atmosphere. Yeah. And he realizes he's coming towards some sort of airship of some sort, and he recognizes it as the blade ship, which is bad news, because as far as we know, there's exactly one of those. It's, and it's got like, a battle bridge. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. not just any bridge. 
It's the yeah, battle, it's battle bridge. bridge. Yeah. They have another bridge for playing bridge. It's very funny <laughs> hearing about this in the atmosphere after weeks of uh-huh. hearing the U.S. government shoot down like, <laughs> things uh, oh my God. from our skies. Yeah, oh An my God. unidentified object yeah. was sighted over Nova Scotia. <laughs> we believe it may have been a bug fighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This or three, when asked for comment, said, that's not my blade chip. <laughs> See, we're really see. That's the thing about us, Anna, cool kids. We're really topical. topical. We're really with it yeah. on the on the news, yeah. you know. So, yeah. um, Axe realizes, yeah, he's reached the private command ship of Visser Three. Mm-hmm. They drop him on the floor. He's surrounded by his ten horses. Hooves- Scrabble. Yeah. Because he's scrabble. on his side. Scrabble, Have you scrabble, ever scrabble, seen scrabble. a horse try to stand up? It's not an elegant thing. Yeah. Have you ever seen a mule figure skate? No. It's very beautiful. I was about to say it sounds nice. <laughs> yeah. So he's surrounded. He reminds us Sasha. that the hork Bajir are a decent, peaceful race enslaved by the Yurks. We get a kind of, I guess these are the first hork Bajir we've seen in this book. And so we get a description. Axe says they sent 10 of them with Dracon beams to guard him. And he's like, two or three would have been plenty. So this is a bit of a compliment. Yeah. And they make <laughs> they make the tactical error of surrounding him with guns. Really bad idea. Just like if oh, you, you just end beam, up shooting your friend. You just shoot, yeah. Lots of because a dragon beam, they don't seem to stop. Beaming. No. They seem to keep beaming mm-hmm. until they're cutting That's through true. the earth. That's so I true. think, yeah, you got to be real careful with yeah, those. Yeah. Oh, Visser 3 walks in. Well, well. So we have our first captive. He's so excited. He is so He's excited about this. Relishing this. Tail swishing yeah. like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Who's this unfortunate? This is great because we are working on, as far as we know, the very first. A musical. That's Andalite right. Andalite the That's musical. Right. We don't know the name yet, but. Andalite, Andalite the Chapman's Hork Bashir musical. <laughs> yeah. Um, Foot sharp, arm sharp, yeah. cut off your Sunday sharp. Like, <laughs> hey, Jack, get back. My arms are really sharp. Like, <laughs> the unbearable and delightness of being is what it will be called. No, I'm waiting just... for Elfangor. Oh. oh, Innis, Rosencrantz, and Innis are dead. <laughs> Innis 226 and 495. Uh-huh. Are dead. So we just. We just we just revealed the the musical and how the first people to be able to hear the songs will be top tier subscribers to our Patreon. That's true. Just we can't promise one every month, but if you get in there with that eight dollars, the thing I'll write you one every month. You don't worry about that. I'll write you. A <laughs> I little, won't I'll promise they'll Miranda be good. I, I won't even promise they'll be month. about animorphs, but I will write a yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. So Axe really wants us to remember that. Elf, not Elfangor, <laughs> Mr. Three is his brother's <laughs> killer. The sight of him filled me with loathing. My brother's killer, the creature I knew I had to destroy. If I didn't, I would never have the honor of being a true warrior. And then a few paragraphs later, it's, but now I didn't have that excuse. Visser Three was before me. My brother's killer. And I think it comes up a few times besides that too. So Axe has a mission. He does, does want to kill. He feels a lot of pressure yeah. to kill him. Yeah, yeah. it's... Very desperation tactic. It's not a good long game. It's very like tit for tat. It's honestly kind of petty. Like if somebody killed my brother, I'd be like, whatever. I don't have a brother. (laughs) Good. Good. That's a great hypothetical, Chris. Very helpful. Uh, um, Do we think X kills Fister 3? (laughs) Like right now? Right now? (laughs) That's a prediction moment. Uh, Do we think he's going to pull it off? I, I don't. Care. I think Visser Three will die. I don't know that. I don't know that Axe will personally slash him. Yeah, yeah. But he will be involved in his death. So Axe does not strike out at Visser Three, and Visser Three says, "Oh, you're not even full grown, Adelaide." <laughs> I think he's drunk. I don't know why I think he's drunk. <laughs> yeah, he's this drunk scene. in the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah. He goes, yeah. my Velik brings me a child. He just came <laughs> up with that name in that moment. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, he did come up with that name. Bit, yes. I named it myself. In the Yurk language, it means yeah. pet. 
It's a rare life form from right here in this solar system. This blew my fucking mind. I got way too stoked at this. The big gas giant, the one with the prominent rings. Then Axe in his head says Saturn. That's what the humans call it. But I said nothing to Visser. Answering might have revealed that I was in contact with the humans. But this is why I bet you that Chapman was asked to study up on the history of Saturn. I bet you he was buying a history of Saturn book. There's so many questions with this, right? Is he saying this is a life form similar to Saturn? Is he saying that this is Saturn? Is he saying that one of, but not all of our gas giants are actually creatures Mm. like this? And also... Oh, Miranda, I'm going to offer you um, a second opinion on how to read this. (laughs) I think it's some dust beast from (laughs) Saturn. From Saturn. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sitting here going, how does a cloud of dust with the mass of Saturn come to our planet? (laughs) And how does it not throw off our orbit? Exactly. No, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, I I can now see your concern. Okay. I got your reading. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, the gas giant or the ice in its rigs is like, like apparently this big monster and yeah. Saturn's going to come eat us. But no, okay, it's a beast from yeah. Saturn. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. He does say it's um, a rare yeah. life what form from right here in this solar system. Oh, I see it. But it's from the solar system. But then he goes, the big gas giant, the one with the... So the, yeah, there's, to explain, there's grammatical ambiguity. Yeah. It says, as a whole sentence, it's a rare life form that from right here in the solar system, period. The big, gas. the big gas giant, comma the one with the very prominent yes. ring. If it had yeah. been a colon, that would have definitely meant that he was saying this monster is Saturn. Yes. But I think this yeah. is so, ambiguous. I mean, would this book be better yeah. if we found out that Saturn had been pursuing these children? <laughs> had disappeared well, suddenly from the that sky. caning of him eating his son makes way uh, more sense. Uh, just loves mm-hmm. children. So Visser 3 is very, he he's still monologuing and he says, you know, he's relieved to find out that Axe is an Andalite because apparently some of his advisors had been suggesting the ludicrous notion that they may actually just be humans. Yeah. Who can more? Let me remind you, this is a genius Uh speaking. Uh, (laughs) Yes, an evil genius. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he has some wild confirmation (laughs) bias. Like he wants them to be Andalite bandits so bad. And Axe goes with it. He's like, oh shit, I need him to keep thinking we're all Andalites. So he's like, my uncles will destroy you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, all right, calm down. You and your uncles have caused me some annoyance. It is true. You destroyed the truck ship. We used to gather oxygen and water. It felt so good when that came the up The only again. time it will ever be mentioned yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was very unfortunate. He'll own it. And yeah. he destroyed our ground-based Kindrona. That was even more unfortunate. Yeah, which this is an important, this is very cool because we get this information in little, little bits here. And this is how my theory of the crazed woman in the woods how, oh, how yes, formed. with her starved yeah. Candrona, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with her, her starved Yurk. So he says he's going to torture Axe to death. It's going to be long, slow, and painful. Mm-hmm. And Axe has this, like, internal crisis where, like, he's like, I, I know as an Andalite warrior I should be trying to kill him right now, even though it's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. But he couldn't do it. He's like, the Visser's power had me mesmerized. Mm-hmm. It's also a very selfish, like for him to do that for his own honor is pretty selfish mm-hmm. in a situation where he's way more valuable That's to the true. It's very animorphs true. Yeah. alive. I think he's like feeling like a coward, but fear exists for a reason. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Axe realizes... If he manages to escape alive, extracting information is the best play. So he's like, how'd you make a giant dust cloud into a controller? Where did you put one of your disgusting, icky slug faces? Which, mind you, you have to be really careful here not to vis the disser. I'm sorry, dis the visser (laughs) to like, because he's an angry, he's a temper. And he's a little drunk. He's a little drunk. (laughs) And he's happy to have it. He is in this scene. He's so jubilant. Yeah, Yeah, he. Yeah. This the disser. Because yeah. <laughs> so he says, oh, the Valik is not one of us. He's not a controller. <laughs> He's not really a he. <laughs> There's no intelligence he there. Or at 
least not much. <laughs> Fascinating life form, really unlike anything we've ever found before. It spreads through the atmosphere as a dust. Each particle can sense life form energy, any life form. When one particle senses prey, the millions of particles come together to attack the life form and chew it into shreds. The energy of each shredded bit is then absorbed by the particles themselves. Perfect. Basically, laughter and soundless but vile in my mind. I think Axe is a little bit into the viscer here. Like, he's charmed. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's charmed, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Charmed and alarmed. Two possible casting choices. One obvious one, Alan Cumming oh, as the Visser. Yeah. For sure. You just but watched all of the a, traitors. Yes. So. I did. And in a and in a perfect world, in a perfect world, Julia Child. <laughs> 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 I'm just imagining. I, this is how they make omelets, and I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh. I'm Julia Child. Uh, like, <laughs> and today, you know, beef talk we're talk, talking David about Letterman? life for <laughs> we call it for the Malik. <laughs> just one of their faces. Now the Malik, fascinating creature. Projected poorly <laughs> onto like a puppet of an Andalite. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, man. That would be great. Suck puppet and then Andalite starts, Julia yeah. Child. <laughs> yeah, can you make that picture of me, Maria? <laughs> I don't know. I think all Visser 3 wants is an audience, and I think Hork Bajir and Taxons and Human Controllers just don't give him the same right. high anymore. Right. Like, and yeah. so right. Axe being, he needs acts in this moment well how would it how would it be if you were like a theater kid <laughs> right growing up in a militaristic organization he's an artist. right he's yeah. an artist he's just an artist he doesn't want to do this but he is finding a way to do his job as best he can and frankly pretty damn well he's viscer three That's and true. get his kicks at the same yeah, time yeah he to entertain himself. He had to find the dust monster. <laughs> this is his <laughs> best play right now. This is how he's going to yeah, catch yeah. those children. <laughs> he is becoming more and more pinky in the brain. Like his his plots are becoming he is more and more both pinky and the brain and brain. Yeah. <laughs> so Mister Three explains. They lost a lot of soldiers trying to figure out how this creature worked, but... Such a Zap Brannigan line. It's like... <laughs> I'll finish it someday. <laughs> but they figured out they could reprogram what type of energy it's seeking out since it feeds on energy. And apparently morphing energy mm-hmm. is specific. How are yes. they programming it? Did either of you get this? That they have not explained that. <laughs> I, I'm well, imagining yeah. basic conditioning. Yeah. That's why it yeah, took so many, like, so many people to get <laughs> ring a bell. Yeah. It salivates and kills an animorph. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like how would you? How and also why would the fuel be compatible? Because it they say that it eats anything, mm-hmm. right? Well, it like could, it's just a but prime the, so hunter. they've programmed it to want to eat the type of energy its engines generate. But to want to chase morphing energy so that what it'll do is it will go, it will get the morphing thing, it'll chase it like it's trying to kill it and then bring it back to the person who wants it so that they will feed him ship energy. Incidentally, Ships I just imagine dip, them. If you will. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like they trained a dog to give it treats. But if it's truly such a good hunter, then basic conditioning I don't know. I guess dogs don't just eat everything. No. I don't know. In fact, they make that comparison a little later in the book when they're talking about hunting dogs and how the hunting dog knows that the... Who would hunt a dog? They're so cute. (laughs) Knows that the human will feed it to the point, and it it trusts that so strongly that even with the bird in its mouth, it doesn't try to eat the bird. It brings it back to the hunter. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because the treat is that much sweeter. I want to jump in that Visser starts to really pick at the Andalites hold. Yeah. Yeah, I love it too. Only a Yurk would think it clever to force mutation on another life form, Axe said. And then Visser 3 uh, nodded. Yes, yes, we lowly Yurks know how superior you Andalites are. Holier than thou, the meddling moralists of the galaxy. The meddling moralists of the galaxy. The meddling moralists of the galaxy. The glorious, self-righteous Andalites, princes saving the galaxy from the despised (laughs) Yurks. You've got murder hearts on you, Andalite child. 
and soon the rest <laughs> of your group of bandits will be here as well. You coming? Here we've How got many the twin Visser Threes, Julia Child, and Van Hartzog. <laughs> Did you ask if I can yeah, do Alan coming? I can't. I would need to practice the Scottish part. Oh, uh, yes. How, can you do it, Miranda? No. <laughs> okay, so if someone is willing to volunteer to be our Alan Cumming impression on the podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can be our you can be our fourth host with no screen time or I think time, that's I think it is Alan Cumming because it's this twinkle in the eyes. Everybody send us voice. Yeah, yeah, twinkle in the eye. It really is. There's really a boyish is Alan charm or Tim about Curry. it. Or I'm Tim cheering Curry. for Visser Three yeah. at this point. I, <laughs> I know. No, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. These books are more fun to read from the Yerk's perspective. I swear to God, because <laughs> the underdogs of the universe. That's true. Yeah, they're the underdogs of the universe. And if you if you side with the kids, you're just worried about not being able to go to other gap anymore. And I'm not worried about going to other gap. I have Amazon now. That's true. Thank you very much. This is not a pro Amazon podcast. Uh, we can't. <laughs> no, it's not. We're not uh, pro. We're not pro Amazon, but it's the same as uh, uh, the gap. Yes. Oh, how do we get out of this chapter? No, no, no. We, what we need is we need Miranda to read. It doesn't matter. The Velik, <laughs> the Velik will never tire. The Velik will never tire. <laughs> it'll send it back and it will go on hunting. Or I'll send it back and it'll go. Your friends will be clever. Sometimes they will escape for a while. But sooner or later, my Velik will hunt them down and one by one bring them to me. Who was Axe face to face with? His brother's killer. And he had let him. His brother. Walk away. He jerked his hand in a signal to his soldiers. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He overdoes it a little bit just so we know he's he's had a little bit too much to drink. (laughs) That's what. Yeah. Like he thinks it's oh, cool, yeah. but Axe is like. Mm. <laughs> the second he found out the Valique was on its way back, he started drinking, <laughs> and he's a real lightweight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, I've already yeah. had pre-gaming. two glasses of champagne, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're back to Cassie. Yes. Yeah, back Here's to Cassie, fly. chapter and nineteen. I liked it. And she's in her fly morph. She's following Chapman. And it could just be that she finds Chapman right away and is able to follow him. But instead, the way that she tracks him down is because he stepped in dog poop earlier. Yeah. That fucking blew my mind. I like, first of all, because the non sequitur of flies are great at finding poop. So I and it wasn't so I had a lock. It was like more ambiguous mm-hmm. than that. It was. Um, Fortunately, <laughs> fly senses sound a lot like certain forms of OCD. Hmm. <laughs> it's true. It really is true. It's like when you know somebody stepped in some poop, you're like, you know everywhere they step. Yep. So that you never step there again. <laughs> yeah. So she watches this bald guy's shiny head in a reflection from up top on the ceiling. She flies around him. But at first it looks like he's just looking at books. But then two unknown out. people walk up, up to him. Wait, is yeah. Chapman actually confirmed bald? Because I... Always, I'm just... He's bald, babe. I'm pic- always picturing um, Snake from Degrassi as Chapman. It's just how I see him. <laughs> he's bald, So I'm always he's doubting, awesome. like... It's, well, Snake's bald, right? It is Snake. He's yeah. bald, yeah. But is, it is canon that Chapman is bald, right? And it's not just that I'm imagining... I believe so. Snake. Yeah, no, she says something about yes, it. She okay, says from something his about him head. looking Thank at the you. reflection of his yeah. head. Okay. Yeah. Why is this so important? No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> because just kidding. I want to know if it is actually Snake. Wait... Can we all just agree that of the Degrassi cast, Emma did have the dead eyes and she was oh, kind yeah. of she Snake's daughter. Mm. She was Melissa Chapman. So this is just Degrassi. Now we just have to find all of the. This is Degrassi from a different yeah. angle. Marco is Marco. Marco's Marco. It's one for one parody. Um, what if Degrassi is actually just the high school if you don't know that there's a Yurk invasion? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's happening the whole time. Yeah. So oh, Cassie follows Chapman. He meets with two other human controllers, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So we're each taking a character here. Yeah, I oh, think okay, so. Okay. I don't see why we're meeting like this. The woman said, "It's a little melodramatic, isn't it?" Like some stupid human spy novel. Visser 3 does not trust our communications lately. Visser 1 has supporters among some of our an- our people here. Don't forget, our leader trapped these Andalites once before, and they were freed by Visser 1 to embarrass us. Has that been proven? 
That's the way I might attempt to start <laughs> derisively. That was uh, really good. If it had been proven, Visser 1 would be screaming in the torture chambers of the Council of Thirteen. But we know it just the same. Visser 3 isn't going to let anything get in the way this time. This new creature of his, this Valik, will finish the terrace once and for all. And make a huge mess doing it. I've been running around all day trying to keep this story covered That's up. That's why you've been placed on the police force. It's your job. I know what my job is. <laughs> to control police investigations that could be difficult for us. I like that he feels he has to be euphemistic in this conversation <laughs> yeah. with two other years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only one of me. 10% of the police force are our people, but that leaves 90% who are human. And the humans are not complete idiots. We have witnesses talking about the monsters made of dust, not tornadoes. It's the same as the newspaper. So far, this story is under control, but people believe the tornado nonsense. But you have to tell Vissa 3 to. Tell Vissa 3? I had to give myself space to <laughs> elevate the You whirl going. around and grab me by the <laughs> yeah. collar. No one tells Visser 3. People who tell the Visser something he doesn't want to hear end up cut off from Kendronaries, slowly starving, dying inside. Their hosts, oh, to page turn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the rationing of Kendronaries since the bandits destroyed the Earth based Kendrona, the Visser has been looking for excuses to eliminate hungry Yerks. Now, if you want to, I think I've been hungry, a little bit inspired ears. by Miranda's voice acting as I'm going on. <laughs> now, yeah, if you yeah. want to go tell the Visser not to use his Valik, you go right ahead. Valik. <laughs> Do we have to rely on such things to track down a handful of Andalite terrorists? Yes. And be glad the Visser has his more fun to <laughs> It distracts him from asking why you haven't caught the Andalites. You'd better hope this dust creature succeeds. <laughs> the pressure is building on the Visser to clean up this mess on Earth. There is talk. He may be demoted to Visser 4. Even Even 5. five. <laughs> <laughs> if Visser 3 loses rank because of your failure, take my advice and <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> Kill yourselves. <laughs> Don't wait for the Visser to do it for you. I didn't expect chat Chapman boss. to turn into a YouTube comment section. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if you so don't dark. agree with the Visser, why don't you just fucking kill yourself? <laughs> like, oh, man, it's so dark. Yeah. Like, I did not expect that in a kid's book. Even these kid's books. When they kill themselves, does that mean that they do it while in control of the controller, of the host? Or do, do you they, think they just the crawl host? out? Yeah. <laughs> they just like I think they just, I put think a little bindle sack over their just, shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> they just kind of... <laughs> I think it's actually the sad thing is is it's tremendously adorable. It's like the ending yeah, of Incredible Hulk. The They've ear. got it over their their way. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, that's the uh -huh. Jurassic Park theme song. Fuck, how does that? That's the Jurassic Park. <laughs> what is it? I think they leave the ear kind of like toothpaste coming out of like a tube. Oh. Uh. So anyway, as it goes without saying that this fucking tanks the vibe yeah. like they were yeah. having a good time they're the mover and sh movers and shakers of a town we can't tell you where it is with the eggs tower <laughs> and you know they both probably have offices really high up in the eggs tower but anyway he's really mean to his two friends and uh but cassie gets a lot of information yeah where are they um, when this conversation happens are they just walking, walking through, through the, the mall the i think <laughs> no they're they the bookstore. in the bookstore Oh, they leave? Yeah. I thought they left, yeah, but maybe maybe they're at Auntie huh. Anne's. He I says they know. need to take a walk when they show up. So, speaking of insanity and things children should never say, Chapter 20, Rachel, we're back in Rachel's experience. I think the pain would have killed me if I had been human. But I was not just human. I was the bear. If a child ever says this to me, my life is over. I was. <laughs> for they are a bear. The bear. Yeah. <laughs> I was... Dope bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the little bell. Oh, but no, it gets better, actually. Bell. My front, My front, paws, front were paws were gone. Chewed off by the terrible dust monster. Blood was <laughs> everywhere. I could not walk like a bear, but I could wallow along on two legs until I had gotten far enough away 
the terrifying creature. That's she loves right. the stream. Those two-legged tracks leading about right. a kilometer away toward a stream. They were indeed, Rachel. <laughs> like a horse wallowing is a step above a canter, right? It's like there's a trot and a canter and a wallow <laughs> where the horse goes up on two legs and walks <laughs> and really looks sad. <laughs> and looks sad. But it's faster than a canter. <laughs> Miranda, I'm so glad you're paying attention because I didn't put together that this is what they were seeing. You didn't well, realize that Tobias described these exact tracks? Yeah, no. I a just thousand, don't think I a thought thousand books... meters of a, of a two-legged bear to a stream. <laughs> yeah. I think I was th- too disturbed by what was being described. That's but fair. I, I'm also, I don't think that they usually pay this much attention in the books, am I wrong? Like this consistency of to like environmental there's stuff. More, yeah, they yeah. have a lot more room. This they book. must have they must have charted this one out. But Bear Girl's having a tough time. She's wallowing around. She finds a nice cold stream to lie down in to get all gross and bloody. That's right. Um, she has no arms. She doesn't know if her arms are going to come back. Uh-huh. She feels like Rachel sounds like it could be her name, but like she's still not really sure. I love. I love that. They include this detail about her not being sure if her arms might come back because it makes total sense. But I think it's also just becomes an excuse to use a different morph mm-hmm. in a few moments. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's a good reason. She gives it a shot to morph back into human and she's elated to see that her hands grow back. And she realizes she's in a doofy black leotard. She stands up and tries to figure out where to go next. She's just trying to latch on to her memories. Like, she's like, who was that guy who knew my name? He was an alien. Wait, an alien? Wait, okay. Yeah. Aliens. And she said something about Yerks. Are those aliens? And then she gets a flash of the construction site, but she still can't see the faces of the people around her. She's super frustrated. She just screams out loud going, what faces? (laughs) (laughs) She says a line that's pretty cool after she screams, arg, I wanted to reach inside my own head and tear down the gray curtain that hid the truth from me. I thought that was so funny. And then she says, get a grip, Rachel. I told It's a visceral line. At least you know your name. And she basically decides she's not going to learn anything from staying in this forest any longer. So she decides to try and find her way back to um, civilization. She hears wind rustling the leaves, squirrels chattering. She hears birds that sang songs of love and threat. And then the stream, the stream chuckled. Yeah, (laughs) over rocks and fallen branches. Why are the birds singing songs of love and threat? I just well, I, I like, think well, okay. Yeah, so is this is just threat? me. This is just me reading a little too much into it, getting a little frisky. Not frisky. Getting a little frisky. little deep. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Right? We know she was attacked by birds when she fell and had this amnesia attack. Right? So that's the threat. But. She loves to buy it. Uh, but she doesn't remember that. But she, she doesn't loves remember. Tobias. So when she hears bird noises, she hears love and threat because uh, she's been attacked by birds, but she also loves a bird. The phrase yeah. love and threat does not seem to be a real thing. <laughs> Maybe if she loves one bird, she could love other birds. Every bird. <laughs> There you go. There you go. All right. So chapter 21, Marco, here we go. But the first person to speak is Tobias. He didn't see Rachel or a bear or axe anywhere he looked. And Jake and Cassie and Marco are really riding him for information. And he's like, I did not see anybody. Jake's like, no one's blaming you. No one's blaming anyone. And Marco's like, axe was supposed to hook up with us in the forest. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's not the memo I got. But he's, I guess yeah, if that's yeah, yeah. the memo yeah. you sent. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. He slips up. He says, Axe was supposed to hook up with me in the forest. Us in the I, forest. I mean, us in the forest. <laughs> I mean, meet us there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We were going to get there early and talk strategy. <laughs> and so he's like, Axe never came and met us. And he knows we'd worry. So he'd morph into something and come tell us if he could. And so they're like, so he's not OK. And Marco's like, Axe is not okay, and Rachel is not okay, and it's obviously because of that fucking monster. 
a Valique, a morph hunter. Yes, Cassie has filled them in a bit. She's filling them in. It's a Valique, a morph hunter, Chapman had called it. I thought at this moment they were just all caught up with us as well. Almost. And they talked about it hunting the morphs. But now they're not quite there yet. That revelation will come in a few moments. Well, they're starting to get there because Cassie's catching on. She's like, why didn't it? like kill you at Darlene's house because it went after you while you were morphing and then it didn't kill you. And Marco's like, I don't fucking know. Tobias is the one who kills things for a living. Ask him. But Tobias, who should be hurt, because Marco's like, that was a mean thing to say. That's not his exact quote, but that's kind of what he said. But he says, he's like, I meant it to be mean, but I also felt bad when I said it. And Tobias is like, no, 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 wait. Movement. I search for movement. If there's two mice in a field, all things being equal, I will chase the one that moves. Mm-hmm. Even if one, like if they're running together and one of them stops, I will continue chasing the one that's running, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense. Yeah. And to the hawk brain, they're supposedly the same mouse. Exactly. Yeah. That's when Cassie puts it together and she is shouts. like, that's it. How did the Valique know who we were? How did it decide? Marco, what were you doing just as the beast attacked you? And he's like, morphing. And she's Kissing like, Axe. Right. So you and Axe were the morphing. Basement. You're right. <laughs> and Sorry, when Grace. you were attacked, uh, when you were attacked in the woods, what were you doing? Making and Jake's like, Axe. we were morphing. <laughs> the monster's homophobic. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yes, they finally put it together that it attacks whatever is morphic Mm -hmm. and it prioritizes things that are actively morphic but rachel doesn't know this they realize if she's even alive and so they're like okay what do we do they all looked at me (laughs) well marco suggests maybe they just never morph again yeah yeah Um, cassie can't figure out why it didn't come for her when she was a fly and honestly i think they give kind of a weak explanation of like well it's still just a big dust cloud right and it can only stretch out so far so like maybe you were too far away because it was over in the woods with mm -hmm. us i'm like Uh i feel like a big dust cloud could stretch out pretty fucking far but okay yeah yeah. Anyway, they do the thing where Marco is not supposed to be into this plan. But then he's like, well, how would Rachel vote? She'd be like down. And then Cassie asks Marco, and what would the real Marco say to that? And then uh, Marco replies, he'd probably make some stupid but very funny remark, I admitted. Then he would start thinking about how to do just that. Kick this big windbag's dusty butt. <laughs> Which is so fun to say. I read that sentence in my head three times because I was like, windbags, dusty butt. <laughs> it's so good. This is also when they call time on the meeting. They actually just leave here. but um, And time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they don't know how they're going to kick its butt, but they know they're going to do it. Rachel has made it to civilization. She's made it to a town, something, and she doesn't recognize anything. But she's she's wishing she could couch surf really tired. Yeah, she's really, really tired. And she's like almost debating just asking a stranger if she can stay there. But then she sees a sign in front of a house that has no lights on and it says sold. And she's like, perfect. I'll break (laughs) in. And she does. And she thinks she gets in sight unseen. She's pretty well hidden when she does it. She eats some vanilla wafers. She does. Mm-hmm. Very jealous. That the painters must have left She there. drinks water yeah. from a she from a tap water for- in the back. Outside like, the yeah, house. Yeah, the, uh, the yeah. hose tap. But she didn't know she was going to get in yet. Yeah. So, she, you know, she was Maslow's hierarchy of needs or whatever. She goes to sleep here. She has some nightmares. She has some more visions come back to her. In the visions... They're kind of like blurring into each other. So she she sees that she's back to the construction site. She sees the friends that are around her, but she doesn't recognize who they are. She sees one boy who suddenly becomes a bird of prey. She's on the balance beam balancing at an, in another memory. But then when she looks down, her feet aren't human feet. They're dainty paws of cats or andalites. Yes. That's canonical. She remembers the Yurk pool from the first book or the seventh book. One of the times when they were in the Yurk pool. One or the pool. other. Um, we Why have not both? Five Por que no los dos? Ant- yeah. <laughs> um, we have the ants come back. She's scared of being an ant. In the dream, she starts crying, morph back, morph back, morph. And then she wakes up screaming, animorph. 
Uh, <laughs> as I do every day. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we've really cursed ourselves with this knowledge, you guys. I just love all these people just randomly screaming things in this book. I, I will uh, say I have woken up screaming full phrases before, so, like, it does happen. It's yeah. It's pretty embarrassing when you do it, too. Yeah, but and Marco then, should get a few pennies every time someone says... Animorphs. Animorphs, yeah. yeah. Well, now we get a really scary thing. We get a big knock at the door. Bam, bam, bam. Whoever's in there, come out. This is the police. No. To which Rachel says, that's who you that's are. That's who you are. <laughs> she actually goes, <laughs> 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 covers her mouth. Animorph Rachel again. the Animorph. Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Gilfies on. That's what Marco would say. <laughs> You're right. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. They reported someone Nick climbing Carl. in the window. They didn't report someone screaming anamorph. <laughs> well, that just <laughs> happened. Yeah, and then in what I think is a weird twist, instead of trying to think of a morph she feels in her body that could hide from the police. Right. <laughs> like a fly. Right. She could do she could she do She thinks of she ant and cockroach. she's like, no, can't do ant. Ant bad. I'm like, but you got cockroach? You got right. you got fly? You- like they're not gonna search the house for over two hours if they don't find anything. Right. And yeah. then she gets to go Shrew. right back to But Shrew. instead, she just thinks I need to be more powerful, which is in line with how Rachel thinks. And the grizzly didn't work last time, so she's like, no bigger it's like she misunderstood the phrase the elephant in the room and thought that people (laughs) people wouldn't talk about her yeah (laughs) because because they can't see her oh i see i see if you're so big you just blend into the background it is funny though because she feels so vulnerable book and then when she morphs she goes big very Uh true you know there's a lot of dysphoric elements in this book too of her not knowing what bits are supposed to be what and whether or not they're gonna change back it's just a great line she goes oh i cried out as my nose and (laughs) upper lip suddenly exploded (laughs) outward (laughs) yeah and so the police say come out there now or we're coming in i don't know if this is i mean this is a very unfortunate way of handling this situation on their end but then Rachel says, don't worry, officer. I'll be out soon. And then we break She down. famously doesn't say that. No, no, no. She, she thinks famously it. thinks that to herself. <laughs> yeah. Because it's she's in an italics. Elephant, and in she the... can't speak. She's, <laughs> she, she doesn't would thought say speak it, it to could. herself yeah. either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that takes us to chapter 23, J.K. Yes. J.K. Um, things are picking up. Um, not that they ever slow down in this book. From uh, this point this on, though, it's like bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like how he tries to. OK, so he's talking about how weird it is that Rachel and Axe are in trouble. And he tries to, like, process Axe's death by being like, he was a new friend. I wasn't like, <laughs> I was, he like was attached. Just a new, yeah, he was a new friend. But to lose Rachel. My but Axe, cousin. he was just my cousin. <laughs> but to lose Axe, he was just like a new guy that yeah. I knew. <laughs> He was and like an alien, a new guy that I do. But right. he does uh. know Rachel better, and he's like, Rachel was my cousin, Cassie's best friend, and she made the rest of us braver than we might have been without her. Has Axe ever done that? Probably. No. But he did provide comic <laughs> relief, but I guess yeah. Marco's got that covered. It's true. Tobias leaves, and he's basically gone at this point going forward. That's true. Uh, he flies off. He's going to... What is he doing? He's going to bed? Going to put on his pajamas? Yeah, um, I'm pretty <laughs> unclear on it. Where are they? They're like they're at Cassie's, Cassie's farm, farm still. Yeah, so, but like Cassie's mom is in right. The so they're she's they're leaving Cassie's barn, right. and Tobias flies away, and the boys are going to get their bikes. And Cassie's mom appears in the window and is like, "Hey, that show you like is on." And Cassie's like, "I'll be in soon, mom. I'm here with Jake and Marco." And she's like, "Hi, Marco. Hi." <laughs> Jake, and then she goes right. back and, inside. And then Cassie says, You remember what happened the last time you tried to use the VCR? <laughs> and then she says, I don't want to talk about it, and turns and goes inside. Uh huh. Cassie offers to walk the guys to the road. They walk in silence. We get a strange detail that there's a rattle of Marco's bulky bike chain. Bulky, not bulky. Yeah. Bulky. Yeah. And I yeah. don't understand that word in this context. Is yeah. it real? Let's find out. Uncooperative. Huh. Reluctant. He was trying As, to get yeah, his like bulky horse Yeah, like someone who bulks at something. Sure, yeah. Okay. 
Why it's is his bike reluctant, choice. though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uncooperative. Is it because he's poor? Yeah. No. Yeah. His dad has his job again. He's coming back. Yeah. It's only <laughs> been a couple he'll months, have a though. New, he'll have a new bike chain. He'll have a, a new bike next book. Next book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> new bike just dropped. Um, book nine. new breadcrumbs we look for in these books. So they, they're walking along the road. Um, the full moon hung high in the sky. I got to track by... these moons. I got to yeah, do yeah. it someday. This was this scene was cool as hell. Yeah, I really like this. Like they were just talking about seeing so many stars in the full moon out of Cassie's barn. Marco goes, look, something was obscuring the moon. It passed swiftly and the moon shone clear again. I saw what looked like sparkling fairy dust. A swirl that <laughs> a raced thing away. I toward... see all the time. <laughs> <laughs> a thing it's Jake. I put on before going to the club. A definitely yes. real substance. <laughs> <laughs> a swirl that raced away toward a development whose lights were just visible in the middle distance. So then they're like, oh, it's the morph hunter. What are we yeah. going to do? This is unbelievable. So they're like, we can't morph here because it'll bring doom to Cassie's family. Yeah. <laughs> and, then so, and so they're like, how do we move from here to there quickly without morphing? We children. And then they were like, perhaps traditional means. <laughs> and then they looked at each other. And Marco starts flapping his arms and they're like, ha ha. And, and, and then they say, let's jack Cassie's dad's truck. <laughs> and they do. They steal Cassie's wait, wait, wait. dad's truck. No way, Cassie said. Way, Marco said. They yeah. formed way. a weak plan, a loose plan that is, it goes toward whatever's morphing, right? So if we just go in different directions and morph at different times, we should be able to, like, confuse it. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, it's... um. It's a bad idea, but, but it will Marco help. Marco apparently help. says he can drive. And they're correct that it, they may find Rachel as a result of this. Like the fact that a morph is taking place. Like yes. it's a good it's a good thing. What I wonder, would Marco, would, would they drive one of their parents' cars in a mainline book? Or is this something that can only happen in a Megamorphs book? Because it feels you know, like... It's it especially does, cinematic, this book, right? Like It yeah. does seem fast and loose, doesn't yeah. it? It yeah. seems like... And, like, um, would they let this slide in a mainline Animorphs book? These kids, not behaving. Do you no. think any of this shit they're is going to come up in a mainline book? No. Do you think, like, they're going to... Okay. They might offhand mention that time Visser 3 had that creature. The leak? But, yeah. like... I don't think yeah. it's going to... I think the whole point of it being Megamorphs is that while technically canon, it's not really going to come up. I think we were right that this is kind of like a narrator flight. I think if I remember right, these had fancier like holographic covers. Mm. I think I feel like maybe they're trying to bring in new readers and it's really yeah. exciting. Right. It gives you a chance to try all the narrators. So now <laughs> chapter 24, Rachel, back to Rachel. She become very um, large. She's getting yeah. bigger in that house and she's having fewer and fewer ways to leave it without uh, structurally altering <laughs> yeah. the, the makeup. But That's then, you know, not yeah. wanting to be the first person to break the house down, she was really glad when the Malik broke the ice and ripped the back off the house because she was like, yes. oh, now Finally. I can damage the front and I'm the least of their worries. It's like when yeah. you get to a party and the hummus is perfectly untapped. Oh, you can't do anything. And you're anything. like, I just want one bite. And then so someone like, takes like just... three spoonfuls onto their own plate and you're like, oh, thank God. Thank God. God <laughs> broke the seal on that yeah. one. I would just eat the hummus, I think. Uh, yeah, well, you're the Valik in that I'm situation. Valique. I'm always saying that. Okay, <laughs> Rachel's very large. She big. She breaks down the door. She does. She's like, they start she's like, shooting at her. Well, she can't tell if it's at her or the Valik, but she doesn't care. Bullets feel like tiny little pebbles to her and the police officers <laughs> were very surprised they were not expecting and i was thinking about it if there had been enough cops they could have made a joke <laughs> if there had been 10 they could have been like nine of the 10 police officers were very surprised <laughs> one, of, <laughs> one of them looked up knowingly at viscer threes of elite oh and yeah because ah. it's the uh, yeah one yeah. 10 percent of the police force is under our control yes exactly they say, it's is really yark for pet that's yeah. right. <laughs> but one thing that is important is that does actually give us a good idea of like how many like we could look up a non-major like a medium sized city's police force power and get a sense of how far in their invasion they are. Like it sounds like 
if they took an out of state vacation, they would, as of now, be away from the Yerk threat. Yeah. Which we talked about in a prior book because we were like, oh, could Jake get Kendrona while he's out? But I don't think that's the case. If this or three is heading up the entire Earth invasion and the Kendrona at the top of the little Eggman Tower was enough to set them back for three weeks or whatever and he's like having to pick who to let starve i think we actually have more of a shot than we thought in that like i don't think trust no one is yeah that's true that's true i i think i know at least a significant part of the yurk's problem though with this invasion is that we keep hearing that chapman is one of the highest ranking yurk officers and he's still only an assistant principal (laughs) as an assistant principal why Mm -hmm. He could yes, be placed exactly. in the police force. Like, I mean, the uh, governor again, plan fell through. Who sa- it was yeah. Cassie who said that, though. It was, in in yeah. all fairness, that was Cassie. We do know it's in S226, but that's like, you know, that's he not He gets FaceTime with Fisher 3. Yeah, that's true. It's true. She uh, yes. So Rachel, as Elephant, goes trumpeting and running through the streets. She goes down an alley. She crushes a Winnebago. The, the Valique crushes the Winnebago. Uh, uh, yeah, don't pin that. Don't pin that. And well, it comes like up again in the other narrator. So. She feels Feels like she's kind of trapped and like this is really it and it descends on her mm-hmm. with its tendrils Ten- this time yes. tendrils and she's being smothered and she can't breathe and it's lifting her up except but it's yeah except it's, it's not really making it's having not more trouble lifting her up <laughs> right she's um she's too big she's too big yeah she's too heavy you know 10 tons is too much for this dust cloud to pick up which makes rational sense can someone take rachel's laugh here too big for the dust beast to carry away it's kind of like the elemist (laughs) too much for you creep i love it (laughs) that was good um Um, i'll do one it's he 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 too much for you creep (laughs) uh what was your inspiration for that one (laughs) (laughs) read it quickly read it quickly read it quickly and Ah. as hatsune miku (laughs) <laughs> Too much for you, and then while she's accepting her uh, weird hug from the creep, the leak, um, something penetrates the swirling, huge... angry sounds of the dust what? beast. It's it's a sound, though. A sound penetrates. Yep. It, right. OK. OK. You're weirding me out. Why? I just anyway. the use it's of right. penetrating so close to the too big and too much for you was just a lot for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point. I'm surprised I didn't have that whole paragraph highlighted, actually, come to think of it. But yeah, we hear a screeching tire squealing sound from a car approaching. And now we cut to Marco and Jake and Cassie in Cassie's stolen truck. Cassie Cassie's is dad's stolen truck. Screaming. <laughs> Look yeah. out, look out, Jake, look out, look out, look out. Would you both shut up? I'm trying to drive here. <laughs> car, 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 car. <laughs> Someone flips him off. Margaret's like, that's rude. And bam. then he starts hitting tra- oh, yeah, trash bam. can. Bam, bam, it's bam. Just w- okay, so it's four trash four cans. Four trash cans. <laughs> I feel Get like- off the sidewalk. He jerks to the other side of the street. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Do you hate <laughs> trash cans? Like, is it is that your problem? Do you just hate them? Hate That's trash such cans. A good line. <laughs> it's such a good line. It's like one of the best lines in the entire book. And we I started can't drive. first book with Jake and Marco having their own little hijinks. Golf cart thing. adventure. Golf, golf cart, cart adventure. adventure. Yeah, that's right. We've that's leveled right. up so Marco, far already. Marco couldn't drive then either. Yes, that was um, Jake. That literally was like, fell out of the golf cart. Yeah. yeah. This is truly grand theft auto, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. This is truly, they've leveled up. So he just starts driving on somebody's lawn. Cassie says, You said you could drive. And Marco says that actually what he had said was that he'd scored millions of points playing Wipeout, which is an excellent is video a, game, he it's says. An excellent it is an excellent video, video game. game. It's uh, so good. Do you good. score points in it? I don't quite remember. I don't but. remember. Um, I'm thinking. The, well, the whole, I'm thinking of Burnout. Oh no, I'm thinking of Wipeout, which Good is a game where you fly, Wipeout. where you fly oh, spaceships. Yeah, that yeah. is definitely. Yeah, I was Wipeout's thinking more of Burnout. Whole aesthetic is my favorite aesthetic. It's good. Period. It's, now yeah, that's it's so pod good. racing. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Anyway, so great game, great game. Bump, bump. I was back on the road after running over a cop. Um, 
suddenly there was an elephant went tearing across the street a block away and they said that's my girl oh an elephant with tiny pink ears because we did not mention this but because she was startled while morphing an elephant she sort of some bits didn't oh i missed that quite done right yes she was she was in mid morph which is important i think for keeping the uh, the finger yes she uh, will the, the, the leak. Leak she in will her. finish right. morphing though yes won't we all and so jake says his plan is to morph now that they've seen rachel to try to pull the leak off of her and jake like starts morphing into a tiger and where uh, is jake in the him. car yes. he's in the front he's seat. in the front seat Jake's they in the banish front him seat. to the back seat as he starts yeah. morphing the tiger yeah they drop cassie off right before he starts morphing and then as the valique turns its attention it starts to go for the car yes. and so marco's just got to like floor it and get them they also they do realize that it couldn't lift rachel they did briefly witness it struggling to lift rachel so they have that information how heavy is a car well, i guess it'll just shred the car cuz it'll yeah. shred the car and right. take them out of it right right so cassie's um, going to rachel so she's like yeah like chris said cassie gets dropped off jake and marco keep going marco, jake hops in the in the bed of the the flap out of the truck and, and continues to be a tiger yeah mm-hmm. And also continues to backseat drive. Marco's having a great time. He describes this as totally Hollywood. We're talking uh-huh. squealing tires, smoke coming up off them, then zoom! I had a tiger in the back of a pickup <laughs> truck I could barely drive, and I was being chased by the most powerful monster I had ever seen. I think that water one was pretty powerful, the thump, yeah. thump, thump one. But You may as well finish out the chapter. Yeah. Later, I would be terrified, but right then at that moment, I was just thinking, this is so cool. It's true. Now we're in Jake's mind, his narration, where he, um, a mere yerk in his head and they make it onto the highway and they keep driving as fast as they can. And it is weaving through cars, just back and forth, weaving through. People are yelling. Cars are getting shredded by the Valique as it like as it follows them yeah. through the traffic. No one's dying, um, though. Um, uh, no one's no dying, one is I'm sure. Being acknowledged yeah, going, as having died. Too uh-huh. fast to notice if anyone died. Uh, Jake is purposely dragging out the tiger morph, so it takes a yes. long time. It was working. The Valique is interested in what they're doing. And they also tell us that they're on the highway driving 70 miles per hour, which the Valique is apparently keeping up with, yeah. which is insane. That's fast. People are yelling at them. We get a, jer- a Jersey call out. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. Where'd you, learn, like, to where'd drive? you learn to drive? Joyzy. Marco decides to off-road it. He just four wheels yeah. it out of there. Yeah. Which I thought this was a really rough decision given that they were on a bridge, but yeah. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then he somehow drives through like a copse of trees. Yes. Copes? But then, yes. Cops? And, and cops and misses enough of them. Yeah, he it's really bad. They do everything but him driving through a fruit stand. Jake says, uh, Marco, I'm almost morphed. I'm going to bail. Give me five minutes and it's your turn. So um, Jake dives out. Marco hits a tree and this one he doesn't go through but he's right side, no. he, he like hits he's sides, sideways he like, he sides yeah, he like drifts it. into a tree or something jake smells wild pigs once he gets out of the car which oh, we don't have in pigs. our forest i don't yeah think. but you know no. 30 to 50 wild hogs and yeah <laughs> all that i think i've made Good that reference. joke before uh, uh, yeah it's okay we'll put it on your tombstone <laughs> so jake starts just trying to exhaust the valik he starts going this way that way and he has a cool novel idea where he yeah. decides to double back and charge the Valique. Mm-hmm. And at first, he's not quite sure if he's going to attack. And then he's like, wait, 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 don't touch it. Don't touch it. You lose your stump. You lose your paw. <laughs> and so then he like he skitters beneath it and dives under it. And apparently the Valique has a lot of trouble turning agile. I want to mm-hmm. give Jake a little credit. I do think that was his plan all along. I think he was uh-huh. he just wanted to look like he was going to attack to keep it running at him so that he could then duck under and yes. go underneath no, I think you're it. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Because if he doesn't go up, it'll just. It is so down. weird right. that as a thing that's actually just a collection of smaller things that it can't simply start leading from another side. Like the fact that it actually has to turn around is like very confusing. Yes, that it has a forward vector yeah, that it has yeah. to do. He like, does say, "Let's yeah. see how fast you can Tank turn, controls. creep." I mean, he says, so it does have some weaknesses after all, but not enough. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of endurance as a tiger. He's a sprinter, not a marathon runner. So he's hoping that Marco will morph yeah. soon. It's almost he keeps Marco's trying time. these tight turns and doubling back. And it's it's sort of working for now. 
but it's not going to work forever. And he climbs a tree. Yeah, and jumps out over it, and right? Ju- yeah, jumps out over it. He just leaps. And then mm-hmm. Rachel. We cut to Rachel. Yeah, we cut to Rachel and f- flash a little bit back in time to just after she gets dropped by the the Valique. Just as the Valique goes off chasing Jake and his tiger morph, she is just dropped onto the ground from only a couple feet, but apparently she like cracks the ground around her. Yeah. <laughs> and she starts to remember some more stuff. She starts to get some images of experiences flying with Tobias. She remembers Tobias's name. She remembers the construction site. She sees She sees getting in- swarmed by birds and being yes. attacked and yeah. running into a tree, but she hasn't put together yet that that may be the cause of some of her problems. But she remembers and- now a bit running into the tree. This is one of my favorite lines, so I don't want to go past it too fast. Too fast. Um, she sees the truck going by and she sees she says then a tiger. No, not quite a tiger. Half human, half tiger. A freak. <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> and it's just like I like loved me. it so yeah. much. It's really good. And then she remembers her name because Cassie calls out to her. Right. Yeah. And she she really buys it this time. Like when Axe said it, she was like, is that my name? And then Cassie like says it and she gets it. She gets a flash Um, of someone, maybe her mom saying, Rachel, you have to eat your veggies or something like that. And a flash of maybe her sister quoting the Brady Bunch, but making it topical to her family going, Rachel, (laughs) Rachel, Rachel. Everything's always Rachel around here, which was interesting (laughs) because maybe it's like a peek in the air family dynamic that Rachel well gets that's clearly on. probably the middle child you know and that's that's uh, a that's a rough yeah, life that's definitely, <laughs> I don't remember uh, I think it was Jan on the Brady Bunch yes or Jan it, has the Marsha 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 line right right yeah because it's who's it's the little one Cindy Cindy the youngest one in curls of course uh so Cassie runs up to Rachel then and is like hey your life and Rachel's like she goes who the hell are you do I know you if you tell me who you are, I'll kill you. And Cassie's like, whoa, OK, little aggressive. Wasn't expecting that. She asks, are you OK? And she's like, no. Are you my friend? And Cassie's like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm your friend. We've been friends for a long time. Rachel admits that she can't remember most things. Mm-hmm. And she says, what am I? Yeah, she can't even remember what she is. And so Cassie looks at her and then she says, you're human, Rachel. And then when Rachel's like, to further clarify, she's like, no, no, no. Like, there's something clearly up with me. Like, don't don't give me that. She's like, you're an anamorph, Rachel, an anamorph. And I guess something has happened to you to mess up your memory. But right now, my friend, you have to trust me. You have to trust me. Anamorph. The word for my dream. (laughs) (laughs) And she decides that she has to trust her. She says, Cassie. And Cassie says, yes. And Rachel says, tell me what to do. I love this conversation between them. I love that, like, we really sit in Rachel's vulnerability here and, like, that she has to try. I think we don't get enough of Rachel and Cassie. And Cassie's taking the lead here, too. It's also worth noting that This is one of the first times that because she doesn't know who she is, Rachel's willing to be vulnerable in front of people because she literally doesn't have a choice. Yeah. Uh She's not trying Uh to pretend to be anything she's not because she doesn't know what to pretend to be. How can you lie if you don't know anything? She's not a liar here. (laughs) Rachel, the truth teller of all things. So we've got, I'm sorry. soothsayer. Between book one and Megamorphs one, we've gone from resident freak to resident narc. And Rachel the liar <laughs> to Rachel the, to truth, Rachel the teller. truth teller. Yeah. Weird that wow. Tobias goes missing in this book. He goes off supposedly to sleep in the woods right before the cops show up. Right before the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. He point. did. Yeah. He's Excellent like, listen, point. I hide out in shacks all the time, but people don't own those shacks. Okay. Property is the foundation of the Constitution. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And they do oh mention God. that We're one like... bird cop, too. In that scene, so. <laughs> 
Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return, or at least until next time. See you soon. Thank you.